everyone! So I am actually going to finally, finally get to a video that I have been saying that I was going to do for a long time. A couple of people have requested this and I'm sure that this is all over YouTube because a lot of different people have had this experience, but I thought that I would just give my take and this is basically what it is, what it's all about being black in China. It's pretty much, it's a similar experience to being a foreigner in China. There are instances where being a foreigner in China and being a black foreigner in China overlap, but there are some things that you might get a little bit more of if you're a person of color um, rather than you would if you were a person of Caucasian descent. So I figured I'd just go ahead and do one sweeping video to get this out of the way. It was originally going to be a four-part series, but I'm leaving China in about three weeks to move back to the US and I wanted to do this while I was still actually in China. So um, let's get rolling. I have my computer over here because I wrote down everything that I wanted to cover and I want to make sure that I get everything in. I'm going to try and make this video as brief as possible. At the same time, I want to make sure that I hit all of the points that I've been meaning to hit. Stuff that kind of I think maybe hasn't been addressed in so many other videos, but um, you know, this is just informational. Your experience may have been similar and may have been different. If you have anything you want to add, you can of course put it in the comments bar below. Um, but please no hatred because you know, this is just about my experience and this is how I view China. So let's get into it. So um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is attention and perception. How do Chinese people view black people? Well, honestly, it depends on where you live. Um, China's cities are ranked in tiers, from the first tier being like the most modernized and the most international, all the way down to fourth tier, I believe, and those are the towns that are more rural and more homogenous, like there aren't gonna be a lot of foreigners in those towns, like there might be some teachers who teach, you know, um, English language, but they're not gonna be a whole lot of, you know, foreign people that have chosen to live in these towns. If you live in a tier one city, for example, Beijing, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Guangzhou, the biggest cities in China that have the hugest influx of immigrants, it's going to be a different experience than if you live in one of the smaller third, fourth tier cities. I personally live in Shenzhen, which is a, I guess it could be considered a first or second tier city. So um, my experience here is kind of mixed. You get the thing where people don't really care and they just kind of walk past you just like it would be a normal experience in wherever you're from if you're comfortable. But also because Shenzhen is an, immig it's an immigrant city, there are a lot of people from other parts of China here, especially from the countryside, you will also run into people who have never seen a black person in their life and they will literally stare at you like this their head will do like a 360 to follow you going down the street. They'll do double takes with their children. They will just, they can't believe it. They're just staring at you. And they won't stop until you are literally out of their range of view. They will just stare at you. And upon first impression, you will probably think that it's one of the rudest things that you've ever encountered. But if you take into account that this is the first time that they're seeing somebody with ethnic skin, it becomes a little bit more commonplace to you, I guess a little bit more tolerable, you could say. Um, like I said, I've been in China for four years and I've mostly gotten used to it, um, so it's just something that you're just going to have to learn to live with. Uh, the next thing is how you might expect people to act towards you on the street. Now, aside from the staring, one thing that I also get a lot of, and I just got to be flat about this, is people talking about my ass. Let's be serious. Um, Foreigner, foreign women in general, and especially ethnic women, have a different body structure than a lot of Asian chicks. Yes, Asian chicks have, you know, voluptuous boobs, and some Asian chicks can have, you know, a little bit of junk in the trunk, but for the most part, Asian women have a body structure that isn't very curvy. So if you put a black girl into the mix, and, you know, if you're pretty well endowed, and you have a pretty curvy figure, um, they're gonna say something about it, and whether or not you understand this um, depends upon whether or not you've learned Chinese. Obviously, if somebody is staring at your butt, you're gonna know they're talking about your butt. If they're pointing at your boobs, you're gonna know they're talking about your boobs. But personally, I get a lot of comments about my body because, again, like I said, it's something they haven't seen before, something they're not familiar with. Um, you will also encounter a lot of guys probably trying to hit on you. No different than it would be in your own home country. <laughs> if you're lucky, you might not understand it. If you do understand it, yeah, it's something that you're going to brush off just like you would um, under a normal circumstance. So I would say that the objectification of 
ethnic women in China is probably about the same as you're going to get in your home country. People looking at your TNA, people looking at your body structure, things like that. Um, it's not something that's too terribly different, except in the fact that you might not expect it in an Asian country. I know I didn't. And when I got here to have pretty much the same percentage of men, if not more, looking at me for the way my body is shaped was a little bit, you know, of a surprise for me. Um, the next thing that I want to go into is shopping and beauty, okay? Every black girl has a different type of body structure, a different type of body size. No two people are alike. I understand this. But black women do have a tendency to be more curvy. We tend to be in the larger sizes. I know in the ethnic community, we like to eat. We like our food. And you may be skinny and athletic, and that is great for you. Um, you may be kind of curvaceous and a little bit bigger like me. And if you are, um, I'm just going to go ahead and put out there that I wear a size 12 bottoms and I wear a size medium to large shirt. Um, so if you're running around that size in China, it's going to be a little bit difficult for you to find clothes. Every size here runs super, super small. Um, I wear like a 5X large in pants and like an extra, extra large in shirts. So my advice to you is definitely try everything on. Do not listen when Chinese vendors tell you, oh, it fits, it's going to fit you. Don't worry about it. Try it on for sure because I know that my butt fits into literally nothing in this country. Nothing at all, okay? Um, if you are looking for clothes that fit and you want to be in a more curvy friendly environment, I would say go to Guangzhou because Guangzhou is a city that has the largest African population outside of Africa in the world. They'll say there are a lot of curvy women over there. They're going to make a lot of clothes for curvy women so you can go and probably pick up something that fits you. Um, the second part of this section is beauty products. If you have skin that's darker than anything than a light tan, you're not going to be able to find your foundation color, you're not going to be able to find your concealer color because they just don't sell them here. Asian beauty products are marketed towards skin whitening, they are marketed towards, you know, blemish correction, things like that. So unless you want to bleach your skin, you're going to want to bring your own cosmetics with you probably. I mean, eyeshadow and blush and things like that, they have in grand profusion here. But you know, your foundation color, your concealer color, your hair products, definitely you're going to want to bring all of those with you because they don't have colors that's, that are going to match dark skin hair. And they definitely have no idea what to do with your hair. Like I've literally walked into hair salons and had people take one look at my hair and go, no, no, we don't do that. Curly, kinky, you know, afro type hairstyles, they don't know how to deal with it because Asian women don't usually have that type of hair. This is a wig. I will gladly admit it. I braid my own hair down under it. Um, I like it. It's convenient. And this is pretty much the way that I deal with my hair. I'm really bad at it. I'm trying to get, be I'm trying to get better at it. But um, yeah, they're probably not going to know what to do with your hair. They'll wash it for you, but when it comes to blow drying, straightening, putting any product in it, you're going to have to figure out how to do that yourself or find somebody in an expat community that can do it for you because Chinese people don't really know what they're doing with that. Um, the next part is breaking barriers, and I call this what you could possibly do to improve people's perception of you. Now. I said how, you know, a lot of Chinese men will objectify you, a lot of people will stare at you, and you have to understand that they're doing this not because they want to be mean to you, not because Chinese people are just racist, and you know, that's the way they are. This is a society where they view light skin as more pretty than dark skin. I mean, there's a lot of societies and a lot of cultures that are like that. It's something that I've just come to accept. Um, however, you know, you also have these people that are going to think that all black people are like what they see in music videos, rap videos, that every black girl is like Beyonce, that every black girl can sing, that every black guy is like super tall and can play basketball like Kobe Bryant. The best thing that you can do to alter these perceptions is basically just to get to know Chinese people. And one of the best things you can do to get to know Chinese people is learn Chinese. Now, I know that a lot of you are going to be like, Chinese is a hard language and I don't want to study, I didn't come here to study. And if that's you, I understand, that's fine. I'm not saying you have to learn Chinese. But I'm saying that it goes a long, long, long way in not only helping you live here, but helping you to make friends and helping to correct the ideas that people have about you that are stereotypes. That could be, in your opinion or my opinion, harmful, okay? 
So if you take the chance to learn those couple words, those couple phrases, even, you know, get really into the language where you can talk to other Chinese people, you'll find they ask you really interesting questions like, you know, where is your family from? What is your cultural heritage like? Are black people really like this? Why do all black people have big noses? Why do all black people do this? And that will be your opportunity to tell them, excuse me, all black people are not like this. Therefore, you can kind of change their mindset, and in changing their mindset, you can help them change the mindsets of the people that will come after them, if that makes any sense. Anyway, like I said, this is just my opinion. Um, the next thing that I would suggest if you are dealing with Chinese people in general, and this is not only if you are black, this is as if you were a foreigner in China, period. Accept the things that you cannot change with grace. I know that a lot of foreigners come here and they see a lot of stuff that they don't like that is completely and totally different to them and they go apeshit about it. And that is definitely not the right way to approach things here in China. They only serve you hot water in a restaurant, you can't get any ice cubes, you can't get any ice water. You know, I don't want that. I'm not taking that. Take it back. Please don't do that. Not only is it embarrassing to foreigners who have already accepted this, it's also extremely impolite. Causing a scene is not going to, uh, is not going to cause Chinese people to view foreigners in any better light whatsoever. So please just, you know, you don't have to drink the hot water, just accept the hot water. You don't have to eat the dog meat they put on your plate, just accept that it's there. You don't have to continue to stuff your mouth if they urge you to do so. You don't have to gossip about somebody you don't want to gossip about. You just kind of have to accept it with grace and move on. There are a couple of things about cultures that are different that you can't change, and if you just accept it and keep going, they're going to view you better for it. Okay. Now, I hope this video isn't crazy long. Um, the final part that I wanted to put into this video is my learning experience, what I have learned from living in China for four years, how I coped. Um, so, all in all, when I first came to China, I didn't expect it to be anything like it was. I didn't expect to be stared at. I didn't expect to be objectified. I didn't expect to try new foods that I tried. I didn't expect to, you know, have the difficulties that I had. But all in all, I think that it has been a completely enriching experience for me. I have learned, you know, about different cultures, different people, different languages. I have learned to accept the things that I cannot change. I have learned to accept the fact that people are going to view you differently, no matter what you do sometimes. Sometimes you just can't change people's minds. And my horizons have been opened. There are things that I can't stand. There are things that I love. I have good China days, and I have bad China days. Um, so you know, all in all, you basically have to view each day as a new experience. And as my boyfriend often tells me, don't judge every single Chinese person around you by the one or two people that might get on your nerves. Um, oh, also, Coda, I can't believe that I did not mention this. This is a biggie, a big, 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 big thing. If you come to China as a black person and you are looking for a job, specifically a teaching job, because this is where my area of expertise is. I've taught both in public schools and, uh, and been a private tutor for different families. One thing that you're going to have to understand is that Chinese people, if you are not white, they are going to automatically think that your English is not as good as a white person's. This just comes from the idea of the Anglo, white skin, blonde hair being the pinnacle of English speaking. It doesn't matter whether that white person has a degree in, you know, astrophysics or English or gender studies or whatever. Chinese people look at white people and they go, oh, obviously that person speaks English better than any person of color possibly can. Now, this white person could be Russian, this white person could be German, this white person could be French, they could speak with an accent, they could not speak with an accent. It doesn't matter. Basically, most Chinese people, and I say most, not all, are going to look at that white person and say, okay, this person is obviously qualified, more qualified for the job than you are because they're white and you're black. This is super frustrating, I've encountered it a lot of times, and it can hurt your pride, but basically, you just need to find somebody that's going to hire you regardless. I have found lots of awesome clients, I have built long-lasting relationships with people who, you know, have loved me despite whatever color my skin might be, despite, you know, whatever mistakes I've made, who have recognized that, you know, 
I speak English just as well as the next person of any color and that I love their kids and am making the most of my experience. You will find those people if you look hard enough. It might seem disheartening at times when big companies won't hire you and they won't tell you. They won't say, we won't hire you because you're black because technically that's illegal. They'll tell their friends and their friends might tell you and sometimes that hurts even worse. But if they don't hire you, just move on to the next person. You will find somebody that will value you because somebody is always going to value you. There's a huge demand for English teaching in this society and somebody is going to eventually hire you to work. And it'll probably be, be and it'll probably be better for you because that person's not going to look down on you like a company would have if they would have hired you next to your Caucasian compatriots. Anyway, I think that about covers everything that I wanted to cover and I feel like this video is like a bajillion hours long. Um, if you have any more questions, if you have any more um, comments, inquiries that you would like to hear about this subject, um, just post them in the comment bar down below and I will get back to those questions as soon as I possibly can. Um, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. If you'd like to see any videos about my specific experiences in China or you have any more questions about being ethnic in China in general. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!